Hey guys, this is Rob with the next video in the Electrical Revit project series. Let me get this open while I explain what we are going to be working on in this video. Open our electrical model, create new local, and overwrite existing. As this is opening, um, we are at a point right now where we have all of our views that we need to create a design development set. And we need to now take those views and create actual drawing sheets that will be printed for a uh, DD set to send to the architect. So we will figure out how to uh, get the title block set up with the uh, project date and the project information and project status, get our uh, views uh, dragged onto the sheets and get it all ready to go. So here's where we are. If you recall, our views that we have are two lighting, two floors of lighting right now. We have a site plan, two floors of power. And then under electrical details, we have our one line diagram. Now, if we had other pieces that we've done we could put on like if, if we had a, a digital lighting control diagram created we haven't talked about drawing details yet we'll get into that in future videos um, but sometimes we have some existing details that we can just drag on there but we will just mainly deal with the things we've created so far in this lesson so if you look down here under sheets we have some starting sheets in our electrical project template that we can use. We can use these, edit these, and add to these. So first one I'll start with is, and you may or may not be using a cover sheet, but I usually use a cover sheet to get my symbol list. And I can even put a list of, of drawings on it. But let's start with the cover sheet. And as you can see, that the cover sheet just has the generic built-in Autodesk title block, which we are not going to be using. If you recall back when we set this project up, we opened up the architectural model and found the title block in there. We opened it that family up and then saved it to our XREF folder so we can now bring it into this project. If you click on this title, you'll see over here, if you click on this, I only have this one option. So I don't have any other title blocks to choose from. So what we need to do is go up top to the Insert tab where we've, uh, we've linked things before. This time we're actually going to load a family. So click on Load a Family and then navigate down. I already have, but navigate down to your XREF folder where you stored the title block from the architectural model. And this only shows the family's RFA extension. So click on that title block and say open that. So it will load that title block into our project. So now if we click on the title block and look over here for options, now we actually have this listed. We, lo we loaded the size D for this project. So now if we just, we already have this highlighted, click on D and it will automatically replace it with the proper title block. Now if we escape out of there, these lines disappear. A lot of title blocks have these construction lines, uh, line, uh, I guess for lining details up, things like that. But they uh, typically don't show. You, you can go into this and find things to edit, like we can turn off the not for construction, uh, stamp outline. There's a few things in title blocks that they will let us mess around with and then a lot of the parameters are here we can get to those here or we can get to them in here we can click on it and you can get to project name you can get to issue date and change those here but what we're going to do is we want to match the project name and address to the architect's title block it doesn't come in with the title block because this is just a raw title block without any of the parameters filled out. So the way we can get information from our architectural model is to go to 
let's try the collaborate nope it's in the manage in the in the manage tab there's a bunch of management things up here but the one we're looking for is called transfer project standards it copies selected project settings from another open project to the current project now from another open project well we don't have another open project right now however because we are linking in the architectural project or or model it considers that open so it will actually let us bring things in from that model so click on that now you have copy from well if you look at this the here is our architectural model it considers it open again because it's linked into our project which is open so now we have all of these things that we could bring in from that architectural project you know arrowheads all sorts of things even cable trays and electrical things well we don't want all of that to override what we have in our in our model in our template so let's uncheck everything all we want from here right now is the project information so go down here to project and project info is what we want click on that and say okay now it's telling us that these types already exist but are different they'll be overwritten um, you know if you know we're not doing any energy modeling so we don't worry about this and all this other stuff is going to be fine so overwrite those things if you saw that, you'll see that this changed. The name of this project was called CCC Westwind, and here's the address for it. So this auto updated from the information we pulled in from the architectural model. It happened to also bring in the date that was on the architectural model and the, the um, might call project status. Now we can change these things, and we can change any of these things. They were just brought in and copied. They, it's not actually linked so we can change these just know that some of these behave differently for example this title uh, the, the name of this sheet gets its name from over here in the project browser if, if I was to change it here it would change it here so they're linked but it's easy enough to change this to we will call this DD set this is text it's a label but it is stored and will propagate to all the other sheets so some of these things are sheet by sheet some of them are for the entire set um, and then we, we'll just leave this date you know whatever your date is so there's a title block set up on that sheet well now we actually need something on this drawing on this sheet so now we can start dragging things over so let's go to our drafting view let's see we were looking for our um, electrical uh, symbol list well that's not here it happens to be under legends so here it is electrical symbol list. this is the generic template um, version and we can use this for now you just hold it and drag it let go now I can move this box wherever I want. I'm going to put it up to top, not cover up the city stamp. Click right there. Escape out and see that here's a generic symbol list. Now you can edit this, add things to it, get rid of it. We often, well, I'll be updating this as we add more symbols. But a lot of times this works for now for a DD set. Down here you will see that it automatically adds a title to anything I drag on here. Now for a plan view or a detail view, I do want a title. For a symbolist, I don't want a title. How do I get rid of it? Well, if I, and you'll see you can either click on the view or you can individually click on this title, the viewport title block. So click on that and then up top right on the viewport there's some options for different kinds of viewport settings we can have one with no scale and we can have one with no title at all so if you just pick that no title then it's gone 
So that's already set up to be easy to change. So there, we just set up our cover sheet. It just took a few minutes. So that's done. Now let's go down to our site plan. Double click that. Same thing, other title block, we do the same thing. Click on that. Now it's already inserted. We don't need to reinsert it. We just need to select it. It comes in with all of the data already. It comes in with the project status and date that we set in the other sheet. The title and sheet number automatically propag or fills in from here. So now we just need to drag, escape out, drag our information. Where's our site plan? Right here. Drag it over, place it on the plan, on the drawing, excuse me, the sheet. Escape out of there. Now, on this type of floor plan view, site plan, we do want a title, but we don't want it to say 00. This is our internal organization. We don't need it to say that. So we can change this um, sheet title independent of or this view title independent of the actual view itself. So if you click on this and go to the right, down at the bottom here, you'll see the view name is that, but the title on the sheet can be different. Now if you want, you can click on here and try to just highlight that and, and then Control-C, copy, and then paste it, Control-V, paste it here if, you, if you're nimble with all of those control keys. Otherwise, you can just type it in. Enter and then apply. And that will then change it. And our scale is fine. Now, I was thinking that we had changed the scale of the site plan back when we did it. To, because typically a site plan will be a different scale than the building. In this case, I mean, it fits on the sheet. So we'll leave it at 8th inch. But whatever the scale is, it will automatically fill in. Now these um, template, the template has just circles for detail bubbles, and that's fine. Sometimes you'll want it to say one, one over E101. We can change that and have different families, but for now we just leave the generic. So there's, well, there's the uh, site plan sheet. Now floor plan lighting. Same thing. It's, of course, very rep repetitious, but or repetitive, I guess is the word. But um, it just shows how fast this can be done once you've got a few things set up. Floor plan lighting. Now, this is actually going to be first floor lighting. So if we hit F2 or we just right-click rename, it'll give us number and... We can say first, let's abbreviate, first floor plan lighting. It changes it there, and it changes it over here on the plan. You don't have to type it in twice. First floor lighting. Drag it over and let it draw. Leave some room for notes. Right there. And as you can see, I did not finish my view. But normally, of course, you would have the rest of the lights shown in this plan. And again, let us... I didn't fix the grids either. I'm taking a few shortcuts for these videos. For this, we want to say... Now, I named the view with F-I-R-S-T, and I've labeled the sheet with 1-S-T. So I'm going to make this the same and say first floor plan lighting. Again, that can be different than what the actual view is named. But this makes it consistent with my sheet title. Scale comes in automatically. All right. Now, one thing I'm keeping in mind is I think I had added some notes for some of the views. So I need to make sure I find those. Looks like all I have is lighting controls notes. Okay, so I don't have any notes made for this. Now, that's something I need to show you how to do. Um, 
I think for the site plan we will go back and I will show you how to add some hex notes um, because it's kind of a sheet level thing. So let me finish these up and then we will go. Um, I'm, I don't have another lighting plan made in my template so I need to create another one. Now unfortunately you can't right click and, and duplicate you can't duplicate these are grayed out you cannot duplicate a sheet so we have to create a sheet from scratch but it's fairly easy it's considered a view up top a view uh, tab and instead of creating a plan view like we've done before or a drafting view or a legend or schedule we are going to create a sheet so create sheet and then pick we can pick our title block now that we already have loaded this is WPA title block, say OK, and it creates a new sheet. And down here in the project browser, you can see it just it gave it the next number in the sequence. Well, we need to change all that. So right click, rename. So this one's going to be the next lighting plan. I notice, let me cancel out of here. I notice I already have a 202 set up as lighting schedule and details. So I need to renumber this first before I can create another E202 or there'll be a conflict. So let's just, for placeholder, call this 210. And that leaves E202 available. So now we can go through right click, rename this to E202. Now you can use E202. 2.02 you can put in whatever you need to in these numbers to match your architect's numbering scheme and this will say second floor plan lighting okay and it populates down here and then drag second floor lighting over and get it similar to the other sheet go down fix our title to reply okay so there's that sheet now if we do want a lighting schedule and details we can do this and we can drag on our lighting schedule that got started lighting fixture schedule if we drag that on now I've done this before I'm gonna put it right here because I haven't set up my title block yet but let's go ahead and set that title block Size D, okay. So our lighting fixture schedule is pretty empty right now. We can go ahead and you know tweak this and, and put in a few more descriptions. We may not have manufacturer and things like that right now, but we can fill in at least a fixture description and get that done. But when that's done, then we can put it on this sheet and move it over somewhere like that. While you're in here, you can you can also modify the size of these fields or columns right here on the sheet. You don't have to go back to the schedule to do that. Um, then the other thing we can do is, like say, let's say we are going to use this digital lighting control diagram that has already been developed. We can put that on here. This is um, kind of for a, uh, oh, the uh, you know the digital lighting control system, and so we can just put this in here for now. Okay, so that does that sheet. Now we have lighting floor plan power, and we've already put this in once to see how it looks. Let's change the title block. We can do this in any, any order. Now we need to move our plan to fit better. Now it looks like this title got skewed. If we click on this, we can move our title and we can change it, the title on the sheet, to first floor plan power. All right. We would do the same for second floor power. Um, then we have electrical details. We don't have those right now. We'll just pass over that one line diagram. I'm going to fix that. 
sheet and drag our one line diagram over now I like to put the voltage and phase right here so it shows up because there's no way for me to add it under here now this is not a scaled drawing so this is where I would click on the view and go over to my viewport top right and change it to the no scale option and that will get rid of that scale which is not you know applicable to a one line diagram so we have that and then we don't have any schedules yet so right now we have our full set that we want and now I want to show you how to add some notes to a sheet there's a couple ways to do this see what you like so let's go back to our actual view and, and one thing I want to tell you too is that from this sheet you can actually you can actually get to a view like I could double click inside this view and now I'm editing this view itself not the sheet so you can do it that way if you like also another thing I've seen people do and to get out of here I can just double click outside now I'm back to editing the sheet some people I've seen you can see the little plus sign over here this will show you the views that are on that sheet so you can use this expanded browser to get to the sheets rather than having to go up here and try to find them up above so you'll get uh, familiar with your your best way to navigate things this is pretty handy because then I only have to have one place to look for sheets and views so let's go back to my site plan my site plan view not the sheet the view let's say that I want to add a a note to this receptacle now I can just type in text like I did here but as we know we like to use deltas uh, not deltas, um, deltas are revisions, but hexes for keyed notes. Well, we have a symbol for a hex. You can go find it over here under families is one way to find it. So if I go to families, it's an annotation. It's not an actual model, so it's an annotation. There's a lot of annotations in here to sift through, but once you get used to where it is, for example, here's all of our one line symbols and then we've got um, other symbols we've got tags everything what we have is under the symbols we have some notes a note box note circle a note hex oval we want the note hex so we can drag it from here onto our plan as you can see and do that way the other way you can do it is on, on the annotate it's an annotation way over at the right is a thing called a symbol you can click symbol and then it, it pops up because it's the last symbol I used but then you have to navigate similar to the browser you have to navigate and try to go down and find it so it, it'll take a few times for you to remember what it's called and where it is but anyway it's a symbol note hex and once that's in there you can click on it like twice and you can change this to a number or letter I change it to a one now I can just drag this next to it or I can add a leader to it so let me take that and up top it's similar to text it's a little smaller box than text but it'll let me add a leader and it puts it way over there drag that arrowhead and then give it a shoulder and so now that's how we can add notes and one thing I noticed is I don't think we have a detail call out for that but that's something we do need to add so that we could just put the circle on detail and it might point to a detail for this box in a tree well but for now we're gonna make it a note now now how do I put the body of that note I don't want to put it in this view um, because I may want it to be a separate area on the sheet if I use my browser and they close the families if I use my sheet browser to actually go to the site plan sheet I could start typing notes right here I can just hit text hit that start typing notes you know 
provide receptacle. And um, all resistant box and something like that you know a shorthanded and I can move this around and make it how I want I can do that right on the sheet and you know that works if I'm only going to use this note on this sheet which in this case I am another way to do it and which I I've gotten in the habit of doing delete that is I will create sheet notes as a legend over here and that way if I need note those same notes on multiple plans, like I've done a lot of schools where the, the demo notes need to be repeated on four or five different sectors of a school, I don't want to have to type those out every time or copy and paste. I want them linked. So what I'll do is I'll create them as a legend. And if you remember, legends can be dragged onto multiple sheets, unlike detail views or drafting views. So I will create a legend. What I do is right click on legends and say new legend. I'm going to call this legend keyed notes. Keyed notes and I'll do this twice. Keyed notes um, site plan. Just leave the scale 1 to 1, 12 inch to 1. And then I get a blank sheet where I can start typing my zoom in. I can start typing my key note. Vandal resistant box. And I may see, you know, see detail. But for now, that's good. And then I like to give it, close that text. Now I like to give it a title. I'll use the same text size and I can change later. I'm going to use the underline feature over here. Keyed, spell it right, notes, site plan. Now I put the name right here so I can remember, I can tell when I drag it on a sheet that I have the right notes. I've done it before where I dragged the wrong notes onto the wrong sheet and that created a mess. Do that and then I can click on this. Now I can actually change it to a larger font. I can go up to the Arial. I don't need arrows right now so I'll just go Arial. I can make this a larger font and then I can use my symbol up here or drag it over again. I can use symbol, find my, see now I have to go down and find it. I need to go down and find MFIA symbol note hex. There he is. Now I can't see it for some reason as I drag it, but if I drop it, there it is. So I can put that there. Click on that type my one. Now I have a legend with my site plan notes. Now if I go back down to my site plan drawing, I can drag my keyed notes site plan into my drawing. And as again, I do not need a or do not want a title onto my notes. So go up here and do the note title. And then the other thing I notice is that my plan it's kind of encroaching on my notes. I can simply drag it over to make room. So that's the method I use to get notes onto a plan. You can do this with general notes. Um, I've just gotten into the habit of creating a legend and then I can have multiple legends. I can right click these notes and say duplicate view with detailing. With detailing means with the text along with it. Now I've created a copy and I can make this um, one line, you know, one line notes. And I can start putting my notes in here. I can, I can actually delete the note for now or just make it, I like to make it just a placeholder. And then rename this. So now I have keyed notes for my one line diagram if I need those. So there I have my sheets and next video we will figure out how to print these things. But for now, let's synchronize and close it out and until next time.